So this is section 5.6, and we had a couple of, of word problems that we needed to finish. So the first one, this was number 11 on that assignment we were working on. It says, Jack can mow lawn in four hours, Tom can mow the lawn in six hours. How long will it take them to mow the lawn together? Well, we can use a chart to organize ourselves in this problem and set it up, because we need to come up with an equation. So I'd like you to draw a chart like the one I just drew here. So at the top you want to write portion of the work completed by or fraction of the work completed by and then your headings are time, Jack, Tom, and together. So first of all, um, after one hour, let's talk about what portion of the work Jack has done. If it takes Jack four hours, what fraction of the work has he done after one hour? Well, that would be one-fourth of the work. Since it takes him four hours, in one hour he will have done one-fourth. Of course, Tom would have done one-sixth of the work since it takes him six hours to do the work. So together, if we just add those two numbers, we get five-twelfths. So after one hour working together, they have done five-twelfths of the work. Let's look at two hours. So after two hours, what fraction of the work has Jack done? Well, that would be two-fourths of the work. Each hour he's doing one-fourth of the work. And similarly for Tom, it would be two-sixths. So if we want to know what fraction of the work they've done working together, we just add those we get 10 twelfths, which reduces to 5 6. So now at this point, let's look at after x hours what fraction of the work Jack and Tom have done working together. Well, Jack will have done, well, notice the pattern here. We have 1 fourth after 1 hour. After 2 hours, Jack has done 2 fourths of the work. So after x hours, he will have done x fourths of the work. And similarly, Tom will have done x6 of the work. So working together, if you add those together, well, so they've done x4 plus x6 of the work. Now, think about this. After one hour, they did 5 twelfths of the work. After two hours, they did 5 six of the work. So they're almost done. So what do we want that number to be? Well, the number 1 would represent all the work. So let's change this question mark to a 1. And let's continue on. Um, now let's make sure we understand what x represents here. X is the time that it takes them to complete the job working together. And this is our equation that we're going to use to figure out what X is equal to. So first of all, you should find an LCD. And it is 12. So you'll multiply both sides of the equation by 12. And when you do that, we get 3x when you do 12 times x over 4. You can always do the arithmetic off to the side if you want. Of course, 12 times x over 6. Again, you want to use 12 over 1 times x over 6. You're going to get 12x over 1 times 6, which is 12x over 6, or 2x. On the other side, you've got 12. And then you can finish it out from there. And you get x is 12 fifths, or 2 and 2 fifths. And so working together, it takes them two and two-fifths hours. Let's move on to the other problem. It says the speed of a bicyclist is 10 miles per hour faster than the speed of a walker. If the bicyclist travels 26 miles in the same amount of time that the walker travels 6 miles, find the speed of the bicyclist. So again, we're going to draw a chart. And in fact, when we work with speed, this formula d equals r times t is the formula that, or the equation that we're going to want to use. And, uh, and so we have 
a distance, rate, and time that we can set up for the bicyclist and the walker. Well, we were asked to find the speed of the bike list, bicyclist, but um, that actually isn't what we want to call x, or at least that's not what I would choose. Notice it says that the, the speed of the bike list is 10 miles per hour faster than the speed of a walker. So if we knew the speed of the walker, then we know the bicyclist is going 10 miles per hour faster. So let's, e let's let x equal the speed of the walker. So that means if the bicyclist is going 10 miles per hour faster than that speed, then x plus 10 represents the speed of the bicyclist. Now the distance of the bicyclist was 26 miles, and the distance of the walker was 6 miles, and notice it says in the same amount of time. So our time is the same here. Um, we don't really have the time, but we know that the time that the bicyclist went 26 miles is the same as the time that the walker traveled 6 miles. So we've got to figure out some way to come up with an equation here. Well, let's remember, uh, let's just uh, think about our equation d equals r times t. We could actually solve this for t by dividing each side by r. And so we can actually write t for these two uh, people using d over r. So the bicyclist, the distance there is 26 and uh, the rate or r would be x plus 10 so that's distance divided by rate and we could do the same thing for the walker it's his distance divided by his rate that gives you the time and then remember we said the times are equal and so now we have what we need to write the equation so it's 26 over x plus 10 equals 6 over x we're going to cross multiply 6 times x plus 10 equals 26 times x. And when you solve that, uh, let's see, we're going to get x equals 3. So now keep in mind, that's the speed of the walker. We need to find the speed of the bicyclist. So let's go ahead and, let's see, it's 3, for, three miles per hour for the speed of the walker. So since it's x plus 10 for the bicyclist, that's going to be... Speed of the bicyclist is 3 plus 10, which is 13 miles per hour, and that's our answer. And that's it for, for that assignment. So I need you guys to do numbers 12 and 14. They're very similar. And we'll wrap things up on Monday and get ready for, or Monday or Tuesday, and then get ready for the test on Wednesday or Thursday, depending on which class you're in.